Welcome back to Nicklands' Comic Corner, classic slash non classic. This is episode number 806, and my 700th double shot. I have two Batman traits, not bad for my 700th double shot, and they are first, it is Batman the Dark Knight 3 The Master Race. This trait collects the entire six issue miniseries. And they even have all the times. The only don't the, the only book they don't have in this book, which is published from the same time as this, is The Last Crusade, which takes place uh, about twenty years before the events of Dark Knight Returns. Yeah, I'm surprised they never included that particular one shot here. Which is a little weird. It's done by Frank Miller and it's set in the same time period. A little surprised they didn't throw in that one shot, but no, they threw in like this entire nine issues of them in the series. Along with these Dark Dark Knight Universe presents, the Atom. Wonder Woman, Lara, World's Finest, Strange Adventure, Detective Comics, and Action Comics. Yeah, a lot of these are basically you know, after classic comics. Two of them are still publishing this very day, and that's uh, Action Comics and Detective. Strange Adventure is no longer published. That's basically about Green Lantern. World's Finest is basically Lara teaming up with uh, Karen Kelly. Lara, of course, basically is Supergirl. So I'm a Batgirl. Green Lantern, obviously. Actually, it's mentioned about Hawkman, Hawk Girl's children. Yep. Now, I should point out, though, when this series was coming out from the period of 2016 to 2017, despite the fact it was nine issues, it took, it felt like it took almost two years to release this damn series. There's a reason for that. Because for some strange reason, despite the fact Brian Azzarello was the writer and Frank Miller is listed as the co-writer, even though he didn't write any of this at all, he, I think he did some artwork for some of the tie-ins. I think he did a cover of a couple of the issues, but he had nothing to do with this actual series itself. And the series, for some reason, was delayed. I have... As far as I know, DC Comics has never publicly stated what was the reason for the delays. As far as I know, this is actually one of a few series DC has actually had delays for, and no one has ever bothered to explain what the delays were. The other books that were delayed because of, well, no explained reason. Uh, one was Brian Hitch's run for Jail at Justice League America. Yeah, that book was delayed, and they never bothered to explain the, the reason for a delay for that. Mm-hmm. Now, the story for this particular miniseries is that it takes place three years after Dark Knight Threats to Ken. Yeah, despite how bad that comic is, it's still canon in this universe. Yeah, three years have passed by. Crime, as far as I can tell in Gotham, has kind of gone down. And there's new Batman in town. Mm -hmm. Yeah, new Batman in town. And it's not Bruce Wayne. No, in the person's back costume is actually Kara Kelly. Of course, later on the series, she about halfway through the series, she takes his name Batgirl, and at the end of it, she becomes Batwoman with new costume. Much, it's kind of loosely based upon one of uh, Barbara Gordon's costumes. Now, in case you're wondering, does Barbara Gordon ever exist in this continuity? No. In this miniseries, Commissioner Gordon, well, actually, it's uh, Commissioner Yen. Yeah, she's the commissioner of the GCPD now. She became the GCPD commissioner back in the original Dark Knight Returns miniseries. Yeah, and also, in case you're wondering, though, was she in the previous series? No. Yeah, that's something really weird, though. Despite the fact she was actually one of the main characters of the original series, she's not in the sequel. Nope, they do mention the previous series about how Bruce Wayne got into a big brawl with Lex Luthor. And as mentioned with Brainiac, yeah, loosely stuff related to, to Dark and Tragic as mentioned here, but it doesn't impact the story at all. By the way, in case you're wondering who's the main villain, is it one of the regular DC villains? No. Also, for some reason, some of the Batman villains do not make appearance in here. As a matter of fact, none of them do, surprisingly. They do bring back uh, Bruno, the woman who had... Swastika's tattoo basically on her breast and her rear end. Yeah, the surprisingly they brought back this character. I thought this character died. This character only appeared like once in the original miniseries. Uh, she appeared in this series. Heck, she made a cameo in All-Star Batman and Run Boy Wonder. Yeah, and that book takes place about 30 years before the events of this book. Before the events of the original miniseries. Yeah, as for why she was there, my guess, Frank Miller threw him because of fan service. Oh, and also, she she showed up in Tenta Comics one shot, and she made out with Commissioner Yin. No joke, she did. She made out with her, uh, implying that maybe Bruno might be a lesbian. But here's the thing about Bruno. 
They've never been much about this character at all, aside from the fact that she apparently is a fan of Nazi apparently she's a fan of Nazis. Yeah, nothing much has been revealed with this character at all. They've never fully explained her. Yeah, that's the thing about Frank Miller. They've never explained this character. I mean, it's implied she might be a lesbian and she has things for Commissioner Yin, but that's it. And that happens in the Tip to Comics one shot. And the main villain of the series is, well, the followers of this cult who apparently killed the the citizens of the of Candor. And in case you're wondering, um, there in the first issue of the series, you have Wonder Woman after she kills a bunch of monsters, the dinosaurs. She goes back to apparently Themyscira is in is in uh, Brazil for some reason. Yeah, they never explained this. Where she has a baby. And she carries around, and at one point she pulls down part of her alpha to show she can breastfeed. My theory, I had the theory when that issue came out that that was actually Frank Miller's idea for her to do that. Yeah, to show off one of her breasts just to do that. I mean, yeah, if she's going to breastfeed, okay, fine. Yeah, but the book itself doesn't have a teen rating, and yet we have partial nudity in this series. Yeah, first time I can think of uh, for this particular series, and we actually have nudity. Well, you kind of had nudity with Bruno, but at least that he's she's kind of censored. I know it's a woman because, well, breasts, obviously. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have Barry Allen pops up in here, and in case you're wondering, he's still he, the the is he wearing the same outfit that she that he wore in Dark Knight Rises again? Oh heck yes, he's still wearing that stupid black costume. He, he, I'm sure some people agree. That costume is stupid. At least the Adam is wearing his correct costume. In the case of Barry Allen, nope. Uh, in case you're wondering, does uh, Plastic Man show up in this mini series? Nope. Not even Green Arrow or even uh, The Question. Yeah, they're absent, which is kind of weird. Superman plays a role in this series, and even at one point, he takes him to a Lazarus pit. I'm like, where the heck did he find this thing? And there's no mention of this continuity of Damien. Yeah, that's the thing about the original miniseries, because they split the same kind of the original one, which came out back in the mid-80s. I actually own the trade uh, for the original one. I don't own Dark Knight Trades again. I have never reviewed it. I see. I've read it. It's pretty bad. Yeah, and they do, of course, beat the villains. At one point, Superman's trapped in goo. Yeah, he's trapped in goo. Also, for some reason, when they show the cover for Hawkman and Hawkgirl's children, uh, apparently Hawk, the, the woman who's Hawkgirl's daughter... Apparently, she's not wearing her outfit top. She apparently is topless, but her breasts are covered by, by black substance. Also, when they shove Green Lance in this thing, he looks like the way he did in, the, in Dark Knight Treads. He looks like this um, Martian had to rip off, but it actually is Green Lantern. As for who the heck he's married to, never revealed of who the heck his wife and kids are. Yeah, that's the weird thing. Of course, they have. He does meet the crypt, some Kryptonians who do rip off his hand. And somehow he can control his ring despite the fact that he can be nowhere near his body. Yeah, that by far would never explain it here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and at the end of the series, you have Carrie Killer becomes Batwoman, which is really nice. Good character development for her. I mean, I'm sure for her, I mean, seeing Bruce Wayne Young is probably surprising. And it does leave it open for more story to tell. It almost kind of feels like that because of the fact that all the corruption that kind of started with the original miniseries and, of course, its follow up. It's kind of like, okay, let's just have a loose fill up to the original one and just have it not me not have it impact the series, have it stand on its own, which it does. And the whole thing in the Master Race, uh, from what I've heard, that's them being edgy. Though, I gotta admit, the artwork is really done good by Andy Kubert. Yeah, it's something, though, I agree with Lynn Cara on this one. Uh, having somebody besides Frank Miller do the artwork is actually a really good idea. Mm hmm. Yep. Here's here's a good example of Andy Kubert's artwork. It's really, really good. Keeps the same style Frank Miller was known for doing uh, back when he did the original miniseries. Yeah, and this series is actually really good. I do love the story. The one-shot's fantastic. I kind of wish they were throwing the last crusade in here, but this book is already thick as this. I mean, look at this thing. It's thick. I mean, the only thing is not issue, but a bunch of one-shots. Originally, now, occasionally, how much does this book cost? $25, but I didn't buy this library did. I give this book a 9.5 out of 10. It's really good. I kind of wish they would explain a little more stuff for this continuity. Like, uh, in case you're wondering, is where's Dick Grayson? Dick Grayson somehow became the Joker. 
I'm still confused of how the heck that happened. Dick Grayson's dead in this continuity. Uh, Jason Todd is dead. Uh, Tim Drake is nowhere to be seen. Uh, in case you're wondering, apparently Frank Miller kind of came to the loose idea of killing off Jason Todd, and that basically was established for death of the family, death in the family. Yeah, so Frank Miller kind of inspired DC to do that, but yeah. And I know that uh, Batman v Superman, base where uh, the Ben Affleck Batman is loosely inspired by the Dark Knight Returns Batman. Mm -hmm. Also, the uh, Bat Tank from the original miniseries shows up in here as well, which is awesome. Yeah, that was something I thought was really cool. They bring back that thing, even though no one's driving it. Oh, in case you're wondering, where the heck is Alfred? Alfred's dead. He died in the original miniseries. He died of a heart attack after Wayne Manor blew up. Yes, after Wayne Manor blew up, he died of a heart attack. Superman, well, at the end, also in the miniseries, Laura actually walks on the ground because this whole series, she's always seen floating in the air. She never touched the ground because she thinks, oh, I'm Kryptonian. I'm too good to stand on Earth. Despite the fact her mother is human. Yes, her mother is Wonder Woman. And Wonder Woman still wears the same exact outfit as she wore in the last miniseries. And in also Batman Robin Boy Wonder. Yep. There's things for that. Now on to another Bat book. Batman The Cape Crusader Volume 1. Collecting Batman. Number 420, 417 to 425. And 430, 431. And of course the Batman Annual. Those that are curious though. Where the heck is uh, 426 to 429? Yeah, there's a good... There's a good reason why those issues are not in here. Because that's part of the controversial death of death in the family storyline, which involved the Joker. Yeah, in the first four issues in here, we have debut of KG Beast. Now, the writer for a good majority of these issues is Jim Starlin and Jim, and Jim Afro is on the artwork. The other writers in here are uh, Mike Barron, Robert Greenbeer, and James Owsley. So I'm thinking, who the heck is James Owsley? It's Christopher Priest. Uh, Jim Starlin writes a good majority of these issues, except for the last, except for the final issue in here, which involves a sniper. Yeah, that's not done by Jim Starlin. That's done by somebody else. Uh, Mike Barron and Green and Robert Greenberry, they actually write the annual. Uh, Jim Paro is one who does mo most of the artwork, and and the artwork in here is done by a uh, Jim Paro, who actually passed away about twenty, about fifteen years, about ten years, twelve, thirteen years ago. Uh, Russ Udrew, he actually passed away like roughly 20 years ago. Norm Barfogo, he actually passed away just yesterday. I Actually, about two days ago. I was a little surprised to hear about his passing. Never met the guy, but I really love this guy's artwork. Mark Bright, Dave Cockrum, he actually passed away about 20 years ago. Uh, Dick Giordano and Pablo Marcus. They cover off this trade. Believe it or not, this is Tom McFarlane's artwork. Yeah, that's actually taken from one of the covers of the, of the series, along with uh, Alan Pos. Plus, we, uh, the, who's the collection artist? Yeah, most of these issues you have like Ten Nights the Beast, which that has been collected in before, and I do appreciate this trade actually starting from there. Uh, and those who are curious, they're like, what about uh, four one to four sixteen? Well, most of those issues, with the exception of a few, are collected in the Batman Second Chances trade. Though for some reason, four one is not in that trade for some reason. Yeah, I do not know why. Well, mainly because my theory, because it's part of Dark Knight Return, uh, Legends. Mm hmm. Also, in case you're wondering, the Batman wears this costume this whole period of time. Like, okay, what is up with this costume? Why, and somebody like curious, like, why does he have, like, black underwear? Where is it, the, the, the new 52 costume? Or, yeah, this costume was designed by Neil Adams. And Batman wore this costume in the 70s up until Nightfall. Yeah, he wore this costume for a long time. There's some slight alterations here and there. Mostly it's the same costume. Tonight's the Beast, debut of KG Beast. Uh, those of you curious, though, what did Cage Beast look like in his debut appearance? Yeah, this is him. Also known as the Beast. Yeah, I talked to Chuck Dixon a little about this guy. He's kind of ba he's a, he's he's basically the precursor to Bane. We're debuting roughly almost ten years before Bane. Actually, did Bane made his debut back in 1993. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just based yeah the whole point is four parter. It's just Batman preventing uh, um. KG Beast from killing the pre uh, president of the United States, who at this point is Ronald freaking Reagan, who by far was one of the most well-written presidents ever in the comic books, because Marvel did a fantastic job writing him. Heck, even DC uh, did a fantastic job writing him as well. Mm -hmm. After this four-parter, 
we have a couple of standalone issues, one involving this blonde woman. Uh, some of the covers in here are done by Tom McFarlane and Jerry Bangham, I think it's pronounced the guy's name. Yeah, mostly you have like a issue involving like this kidnapped girl. Yeah, that's like one issue. Uh, the following issue, which I think is the yeah, it's a follow up to this one. Yeah, pretty much um, 21 and 22, that's basically just a quick little two parter of looking for this missing girl. Mm -hmm. Then we have the annual, which is just, well, something else. Uh, the annual is actually not that bad, just various stories like a murder mystery and then private lives, which is a pretty good story as well. Mm hmm. Now this now this book I own, this is basically also the cover of the trade. Yeah, this is actually the first of a two parter involving well the, involving this this serial killer who's also of a diplomat, he's got diplomatic immunity. He actually dies in the following issue. Yeah. It's implied Jason Todd killed him. But uh yeah. He said, Oh yeah, he got spooked. Also, I'm not sure if this is done on purpose. Uh there's a panel in here with an old lady who looks very much like Aunt May, uh, Aunt May Parker from Marvel Comics. I'm not really sure if Tom McFarlane did it on purpose. I have no idea, but it just by sheer coincidence, only looks very similar to her. Mm -hmm. I mean, despite the fact they have all the evidence to arrest this guy, but they have to let him go because he's a mad community. And Robert's like. Jason, I was like, no way, I'm beating the crap out of this guy. No matter, screw Dip Magnum here today, I'm going to beat the crap out of him. So he fights him. 25 is basically the epilogue disc because this guy died in this issue. And 25 just basically the conclusion to this little loosely connected three issues. Mm -hmm. The final couple issues took place after Jason Todd's death. Yeah, 430 is basically the sniper issue, which I have reviewed at Comic Corner Classic. And the following issue... Let's see if I can get to it here. It's just, well, an issue done by Jim Owsley, a.k.a. Christopher Priest. Yeah, it's just basically Bruce Wayne uh, taking a break and taking care of uh, being fighting crime, protecting a woman, stuff like that. It feels like a story that they would have fit in the Golden Age of comic books. Uh, probably something that Superman would do, but they probably threw uh, Christopher Priest must have done that some, uh, probably do that because they felt like it. Um... These issues are actually pretty good. Now, these particular set of issues basically uh, wrote a version of Jason Todd that a lot of people were not very popular, they didn't like very much. Excuse me, I could explain why Jim Starlin, like, less than, like, a little over a year after he started, almost a year after he started this run, he kills off Jason Todd. Yeah. Jim Starlin himself doesn't stay in the book very long. No, he's in the book for about two or three years and leaves. But yeah, this is one of the very few books he does for DC Comics. It's not a very popular run for a lot of people, but people do love KG Beast. KG Beast himself is featured in a couple con couple times in live action. He's featured on Arrow, though it's actually based on my character Chuck Dixon used with a game the name of another character. Uh, he's based on another character, but it's basically in totally. And of course, he appears in Batman v Superman, which I talked to Chuck Dixon about that. Mm -hmm. These are two pretty good. Um, the three part involving Jason Todd and this and this serial killer who's a son of a diplomat. Yeah. If I'm sure a lot of people probably, yeah, what they should have done told the past like, hey, your son killed a lot of people, and of course the thing with the way uh, I give this book a nine a nine, nine out of ten. The way that a lot of the time that people who are ambassadors are written. And they're kind of like this in real life. And I've, heard, I've not heard this very much, but in, in fiction, uh, people who are diplomats, either ambassadors or some other type of diplomats, they're going to be complete jerks because, oh, we have this diplomat, we can do whatever we want. We can park wherever we want and basically not pay a parking ticket. Yeah, there was a joke about this in an episode of Castle where, I think it was Castle or something else, where uh, it says, well, keep towing your car until you... Um, give us what we want. We don't care for the fact we have to pay, you don't have to pay a, a parking ticket, but we'll keep towing until you give us what we want. Yeah, sometimes basically they do that. Yeah, and a lot of the time, um, embassies tend to be very dickish to, uh, the way they've written fiction is that they're very, not very nice people. They, they treat the cops with disrespect. 
a lot of the time they're basically, oh, you're you're on sovereign soil, you can't do anything. Yeah, I've seen this in Miami Vice, Castle. I've seen this a few times. A couple. I haven't seen much in CSI per se. I've seen this also in. I'm trying to think what else. Uh, without a trace, I've seen that in, and I think that's it. I think maybe CSI in New York, but that's it. But there's a few shows I've seen, mostly cop shows. Okay, so that's it for this particular review. Stay tuned for the next episode where we're going to review at least uh, a trade I own and a trade I got from the library. It will be a Marvel trade and a DC trade. DC trade would be a Batman one. You'll find out what it is in the next episode, okay? But until I see you in the next review, bye.